Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're going to talk about separating effects from our layers so that we can split them up and do different and interesting things with our footage. Today we're going to talk about a technique that I'm kind of surprised I haven't really thought about before. We're going to take a piece of footage and then apply some sort of effect to that. And then we're going to use like difference mat or CC composite set to difference to basically strip away the footage, leaving only the effect behind, which we can then treat and make use of in interesting ways. So I've done some stuff like this in the past, but I probably should have experimented with more because you can get some interesting things. This time I was working on some footage that I had to 3D camera track. And of course, a 3D camera tracker effect in After Effects leaves you with these markers, which you can actually turn on, which was kind of what sparked this. See here, you can render track points in the 3D camera tracker effect. You can also change it to show the 2D source ones so you get all the extra ones in the background that it kind of uses to calculate. So I wanted to split those off of the layer itself and actually just end up with the marks. So if we go through our layer stack here and then we turn off the bottom layer, you can see here I just have the marks themselves. And we basically got that just by adding a CC composite set to difference. And then I just tinted those and then just applied them back on top of the footage itself. Nothing too exciting. What's interesting is that you can take the markers off of the rendered image. What's really neat is that using the footage to difference itself, the footage is actually a perfect difference mat. So we're just going to be left with whatever we changed. So then I just made some box trackers similar to the ones that we did in our tracking tutorial a little bit ago. I'll link that in the description below. I'm not really going to go through exactly how all these things are built because they're pretty much just iterations of the first one. But if you'd like to see more in depth on how all this works and get the footage and everything that you can work with, you can grab our project file, which is also linked below. I also have a thick version of the box trackers. And then I did something interesting where I used vector blur to kind of link them up a little bit. So this one actually kind of tracks and has kind of like a line pattern that goes from some of the trackers to the other ones. It's pretty basic, but it's interesting. And then somewhere along the line, I found out that you can actually get this weird thing using echo. For some reason though, this doesn't work on all of the number of copies. It works at like five, but I don't think it works at six. Seven, it disappears. Eight, it disappears. Nine, it's gone. Ten, it comes back. It seems to be like multiples of five sometimes. And now it's not doing it. So it's weird, but it's interesting. So it basically gives you just kind of like a find edges with embedded tracking marks. This could probably be explored further if instead of using the CC composite, we actually used different map. But let's continue. So then we have square trackers which are basically made using the median legacy. And I know it's trackers, trackers, trackers. But then we started to play around with some more interesting effects. And we started to get stuff like this. Kind of gives it like a screwed up 8-bit vibe. So this version uses mosaic as a basically our root effect. And then we composite with our difference, which gives us this stuff. Then we tint, and then we difference it back in with the original. And this is what we get. But of course, then you get these like different colors in there and it might not be what you're looking for. So instead of doing that, I started to experiment using different matte. And again, as I said, the footage is a perfect matte for itself. So this gives us an interesting bit look, but it also has some of the original footage inside some of the areas, which is very interesting. So again, we're using mosaic, this time difference matte. And then we just CC composite the original back in behind and make sure you uncheck RGB only. Otherwise it's gonna use the new alpha which will leave us with that. And we certainly don't want that ugly piece of crap. So this is what we're left with. Another interesting thing is you can change the mosaic, make it more dense so that you get a little bit tinier blocks and a little bit more of the footage shows through, or you can bring this down and you have like this whole thing where just some of the footage shows through, which is pretty cool looking. And this uses an interesting expression. I think Mikey Borup was the one that was doing this recently, but it's a simple expression to keep the squares in here. Instead of going to rectangles, let me just bring that up real quick so you guys can see it. Expressionist, not that big. So it's effect mosaic horizontal block. So basically we just pick whip horizontal blocks from vertical. And then we're dividing by 16 and multiplying by nine. So that'll leave us with square blocks. All right, so the next thing I worked with is this like painterly looking thing. And again, this is mosaic. I'm not really sure how this works out other than I unchecked sharp colors. But somehow, using that CC composite, tint, another CC composite, both of these are set to difference, gives us this painted look, which is pretty interesting. It's probably because it just blocks out certain fields of color, and so it kind of gives it that vibe. 
I haven't tried this using just straight up difference mat, so that might be interesting as well. Although I don't think you're going to get these interesting dark areas that kind of lend itself to that comic feel. So then you know me. I started messing with displacement, and that lent to some interesting results as well. But again, I wasn't a huge fan of how the difference mat gave us these colors, although these aren't too bad in this one. This displacement, of course, is using just a JS Classic layer, as you've seen us use a whole bunch before. I'll leave a link so you can download that program if you haven't seen it before. So then I decided to make a clean version of that, and let's turn these layers off here. We're using the same displacement map, pointing at the same JS Classic layer. Then I have a difference mat that splits it out into this. Then I decided it might be interesting to tint this, so you get kind of an RGB split. This one we're using yellow and blue. And then we have CC Composite, compositing it back in behind. So other than our displacement map layer, we're just in one layer again. And this looks interesting as you move it around as well. It's kind of got like an overprint effect, which again, I thought was pretty neat. So then I took that displacement to the crazy level and I started making this kind of like data mosh kind of thing. This uses a simple expression down here that we're running on a transform effect. So we're moving the position of this thing around. What's neat about using the transform effect on our displacement map layer is that our displacement map effect can actually look at the effects on our displacement map layer. That sounds really confusing. And basically, we can use that to actually shift around our displacement map without having to pre-compose it or anything like that. You can also scale it or do any of the things that the transform effect can do. So it's pretty cool, and I recommend you do it that way. So in this transform effect, we have an expression on position. So let's bring that up in here. So we're taking t, we're setting that equal to time divided by this comp dot frame duration. So that's going to give us our t value in, as our frames. Then we're going to use seed random so that our random values don't change every frame when we set the second argument here to true. So we're going to feed it math dot floor t divided by five. So what this is going to do is drop off the decimal places from the result. So unless t is like five or ten, it's not going to change. So basically, this changes every five frames. So every five frames, we get a random value for X and Y. And then we're going to add to the original value, the array of X comma Y. So every five seconds, this thing shifts around in X by up to 1500 and in Y by up to 1000. And we have a similar expression running on max horizontal displacement in our displacement map effect. It's basically the same thing. The random value is just a single value from zero to 300. So it'll move around like you saw before. And that's cool, but it's not as cool as it could be if we didn't use CC composite set to difference. That was the way I initially started doing all this stuff just to do it kind of quickly. And then I thought difference map might work a lot better. And it does. And now you can get this kind of thing, which is pretty interesting. And I know somebody out there is going to be like, well, why don't you just add the thing to it and that's it. And that's because it'll look like this instead, which doesn't really have as much of that feel. I mean, it's similar, just not the same. Like This gives us a whole bunch more just junked up stuff in there that we don't get if we just use our displacement map. It allows us to add some extra complexity that we don't have. And you can also do other things in between here. So if we wanted to add like a tint, we can drop a tint in there, and now everything that's junked up is gray instead of colored. Obviously, this technique can be pretty powerful depending upon the effects that you put in before you run your difference. So I encourage you guys to go experiment. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe. And if you like this content and want to help support us on Patreon, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you follow the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. I'm doffed. I'm doffed.